Hello everyone and welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to be talking about the brand new Create Mod 0.3.2 update called Create Finely Tuned. And I'm so excited to jump into this because there are a ton of new things that have been added into this update. And I am also currently running on little to no sleep as I'm making this video. So if you don't mind dropping a like and feel free to subscribe to uh, watch me take all these new contraptions, new items and things like that and turn them into new automated uh, machines for the future. So uh, if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and make sure to drop a like. But anyways, let's jump straight into the video. So to start out, we're going to go ahead and tackle this linked controller. And this is going to be something that I could probably use in the future. Uh, I can see this being a really cool automation side of everything. And uh, it's essentially a video game controller that deals with redstone. So uh, right here, we have one that is placed onto a lectern and I can grab one for myself as well. Um, if you just hold one of these guys out and you right click, it now brings up uh, basically your remote and you can press W, A, S, D, spacebar or left shift to interact uh, with said buttons. You can also have one placed on a lectern. You can right click and then you can press W, A, S, D, left shift, space, and so on. And uh, as you have probably seen, I have hooked up redstone links uh, that are connected to each and every one of these buttons. And you can do that by left shifting right click and you can set your frequencies, your frequency one, frequency two, and everything, and you can see which button it's being sent to. You can also shift, uh, or excuse me, you can right click, uh, and then it puts the bind mode on. Now you can type in W or W S A D space or left shift, and it will set that frequency to the spot as well. If you would like to do that a little bit quicker, uh, but you can see that if I just press W, it's lighting that one up. A S D left shift space and it's doing all of these separate redstone signals. This is going to be pretty useful for testing in redstone, and also I could see some kind of cool contraptions in the future as well. Now that brings us to the next one, which is something that I can't wait to introduce to a lot of my videos. I have a feeling I'm going to be redoing the entire tutorial series in the future uh, because of just how much has changed in these last two updates. But this is the crafting blueprint. And this crafting blueprint uh, allows you to do some kind of fast crafting. And you can see that there's one that's placed on the wall right here, where if you place it down and I'll, I'll show you, it creates a three by three. And if you right click in any one of these circles, you can just set a recipe. So I can set like the recipe for a crafting table, click set. And then as long as I have the blocks in my inventory, I can just right click on this and it will auto craft exactly what I'm looking at. So you can see here, I can auto craft some slabs, a chest, sticks. Uh, pressure plate buttons all at the same time and I can add more recipes and remove them based on what I'm looking for. It's gonna be super nice especially for those crafting recipes that are just super complicated and so many different items that you can just right click and it'll immediately uh, craft it for you. Another quick little thing uh, to keep in mind though is you can set your crafting recipe and set an additional uh, secondary display slot. So you can see that I have a crafting table, crafting table with a little plank in the front. Not entirely sure what that would be used for in my opinion, but uh, we'll see maybe in the future. Maybe this will help with other mods and things like that. Now, the next thing that we're going to cover is the copper back tank. And now this item is going to be used in a lot of the future items I'm going to talk about. But I want to first talk about that if we go ahead and click this on and uh, we right click to put this onto our back. It basically takes up our, uh, our chest plate slot. You can see it's on my back. You might see it glitch out a little bit depending on if you're using shaders or not. Uh, it seems like it doesn't want to glitch out for once, but uh, it just basically is a little backpack, little cog wheels that spin. And if you combined this with, uh, let's see if I can get these guys. So if we take this copper back tank and we combine it with the new diving boots and the new diving helmet, we get a pretty cool combination. And I have a feeling a couple of you guys already know where I'm going with this, uh, where if we take our diving helmet, our diving boots, our copper back tank, uh, if we look at these individually, the diving helmet will actually give us a water breathing effect. Uh, it'll slowly drain the air pressure from the back tank, which I'm going to cover on how to refill that in a second. Uh, but it will give us water breathing. And then we have diving boots, uh, where the wielder is going to sink faster. It's not going to be able to swim. Uh, but we're able to walk and jump underwater. Uh, and one other kind of cool little thing is that we're no longer affected by mechanical belts. So definitely uh, kind of keep that in mind. But uh, let's give it a test. I've gone into survival mode. We fall into the water you could see that we have about 15 minutes left you can see next to our air bubbles which is a crazy amount of time to be able to be underwater so we can actually build some pretty cool underwater bases and you can see i can move around pretty well i can jump about two to three blocks it looks like i could be a little wrong maybe it's only almost two blocks yeah like one and a half two blocks uh and you can see we could be underwater for quite some time uh, if you can't get out though just take your diving boots off and then you could just swim out 
And that brings us to, so how do we recharge our copperback tank? Because you can see that it's now going to be used in this system, and we're 100% going to be using this in a lot of future machines I'm covering in the rest of this video. So how do I recharge it? Because the description says it collects pressurized air at a rate depending on the rotational speed, which is something I didn't really know what it meant at first. Well, all that means is that you need a power source that's rotating, and then you're going to take your air tank, which I have about one that's half full, you're going to place it underneath, uh, connected to either a shaft or something that's connected, and you're going to watch it suck in air and actually start charging up. And it's going to take time depending on uh, how fast the rotational force is spinning, but once you have it set up, you can just leave it there and let it process until it's filled up, and then you can take it back off the wall and use it again in the future. All right, the next thing that I'm going to cover is the precision mechanism, and this is something that is quite interesting to talk about. Uh, and in order to talk about this precision mechanism, we're going to have to talk about the sequenced assembly recipes. So there's an entirely new way of crafting inside of the create mod with some things. And that's really displayed by the precision mechanism. So if I right click on this, uh, or excuse me, if I left click on this to see how it's made, it says a sequenced assembly. And this is quite uh, confusing in the beginning. It basically, if you have a golden sheet, you need to have a deployer that's going to be deploying a cogwheel, then a large cogwheel, then an iron nugget, and do this five times over, and then you have a 67% chance to get the precision mechanism, or you have a 33% chance to get random junk. So let's let's show this in an example, because this is a little bit complicated. So we place our golden sheet on a depot. We're then going to place a cogwheel right into our deployer, and you can see if we pick this guy up right now, we have an incomplete precision mechanism. So we've actually only done one. It says next deploy the large cogwheel and so on. So deploy our large cogwheel, pick this back up, deploy our iron nugget. And now we're gonna have to repeat this process all the way until we are finished. So let me go ahead and fast forward for that. There we go, look at that. And we got a precision mechanism. Really unique to craft these things, and I want to go over, so what is this even used for? Because probably that's what a lot of you guys are thinking of. So if I right-click on one of these guys, you can see that this is now used in place of the rotation speed controller uh, crafting recipe, because this used to be a whole different component that I'm going to cover towards the end of this uh, video where I talk about removals, and it's also used in the crafting recipe of the mechanical arm now as well. So... Uh, this is something we are going to see in the future, and why I'm probably going to have to start redoing some of my older videos that I uploaded all the way back in, like, January. Uh, but yeah, this is a new recipe now. Now, this next one is something that I'm so excited has been added to the Create Mod. I didn't think it would ever be added into this, and this is the Potato Cannon. Uh, which, wow, I can't wait to, to cover this. So, if we go ahead and pick up a Potato Cannon, uh, speaks for itself. If you right-click... It shoots potatoes. Look at that. Uh, and this is actually upgradable, which I'm going to cover in a little bit towards the end of this video when I cover some new uh, enchantment books that have been added. Uh, but something to kind of cover is if you hold shift, uh, you can see that no durability of this potato cannon will be used if you have an air pressure tank that can now sit on your back. So if I had this on here, um, I could shoot this, and my durability is now the tank pressure and no longer the potato cannon itself and this is going to be something else that you're going to want to keep in mind towards the end of this video because there's an item in here that uh, we have used a lot of that now has durability which is uh, going to be very interesting for the future. <laughs> Our next thing to cover is the peculiar bell and as a whole it's just a bell that we can ring uh, but we can actually use this guy in conjunction with soul fire to turn it into a haunted bell. And a haunted bell is again super useful. So if I go ahead and right click on this, you're gonna see the ground's gonna glow up with these like light blue ghosts. And at first glance, you're probably gonna go, okay, what is that? This is our F7 mode. So if you remember, there are some mods that if you press F7, it's gonna show you the light mode and show you where mobs can spawn. And that is exactly what this bell is doing. That when I ring it, it's showing all these different areas where mobs can spawn. So if I grab some torches really quick, and I go ahead and place a bunch of them down in this area over here. And then I right click this guy. You're going to see that uh, mobs cannot spawn here. There's no ghosts popping up, but there are ghosts popping over here, showing that mobs can spawn in this area. You can also, once you place uh, this bell above soul fire, you can put this in your offhand. And as I walk around now, I'm going to be able to see where mobs can spawn 
and where they cannot spawn. So you can see if I go over here, no longer can they spawn. But then as soon as I go farther and farther away, I'm now seeing where mobs can spawn. So this gets rid of that F7 mode need uh, by just using the create mod. Now there's also another different type of crafting now inside of the create mod. And this is with deployers. It's called the deploying recipe type. And uh, the way we're going to go over this is with rose quartz and sandpaper, which has been the main thing of uh, basically how we can craft with this. Uh, and this is if we put sandpaper inside of a deployer, put rose quartz down, it turns it into a polished rose quartz. So if I, again, put sandpaper inside of this deployer, put a piece of rose quartz down, it will now go down and actually sand our rose quartz for us. And we can pick up our sandpaper again. So another kind of neat new way to go ahead and craft things. Of course, you could just do this in your offhand, but uh, I figured it was worth to go ahead and cover this as like an automated side if we want to automate rose quartz, which maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. So something from this update that we have seen is that this copper back tank is used a ton. It's used in a lot of different things, and it's definitely going to be one of the main things that once you get enough copper and things like that, you're going to be running this a lot in the game. It's always going to be on your back. So with that, they've given us three different enchantment books. There is capacity one, capacity two, capacity three, and that kind of speaks for itself that if you take a copper backpack, you take a capacity uh, enchantment book, so like capacity three, you can increase the capacity that the copper back tank holds. And of course, you can then go ahead and charge this up uh, using the rotational force. And of course, I hinted at that the uh, potato cannon can be upgraded. It totally can. You can actually upgrade it with potato recovery one, potato recovery two, and potato recovery three, which at first I thought maybe it makes it so you could shoot faster. Uh, no, that, that's not the case. If we take a potato recovery three cannon, uh, or let's take the, actually the irregular one, so a non-enchanted one, you can see we're shooting potatoes and they just hit the ground and they disappear. Versus if we shoot a potato cannon, uh, which <laughs> it's apparently not working, there we go. Uh, with an enchantment three, we have a uh, an ability to possibly be able to pick up these potatoes and reuse them again, which is pretty cool. Of course, I'm in creative mode, so it's not actually using our potatoes, uh, but this gives us the ability to have the chance to actually be able to recover some potatoes. So we have covered a lot inside of the create mod. Now I wanna dive a little bit deeper and I wanna dive into uh, some changes that for people that have used previous create mod versions, there are some pretty big things that have changed. Uh, and there's some tinier ones that I've added in here. There's a ton of changes that I'm gonna link in the description in the change log if you wanna go over, but I've covered all of the key things, like all of the like bug fixes that I didn't even experience slash I've never heard of, I didn't really cover, but uh, all the main things, things that are really gonna change the game, I'm gonna put into this section of the video. So. Uh, this is the ponder support for create fluids. So if we go ahead and actually uh, look at any fluid item now in the create mod, you can now ponder it and now see different uses for it. So you can see we're looking through fluid pipes, all different versions of ways to use your fluid pipes, such as putting casings on it to decorate them, things like that, uh, which is gonna be really cool. I'm gonna look through this probably and make sure that my fluids video is actually covered everything still. There might be some new things or things that I didn't know about, uh, and that'll be where I go ahead and change that. Another thing to talk about is that we have the ability to config a little bit more inside of the create mod. And that is with actually typing the command slash create config. And we now have an entire UI where we're actually able to fool around and change different settings. So I can go into client settings. I can go ahead and fool around with like the ponder setting. Uh, let me go back really quick. I can go ahead and enable or disable tooltips. I can set up fan particle density, a lot of different things that will help for computers that are not great at running uh, the create mod. Same as world generation settings. If I want to get really complicated, I can look at copper ore. I can set the max height, the min height of where it can spawn, the cluster size of how much they spawn. Uh, I could go into zinc, weathered limestone, anything like that. I could even go into gameplay settings. Uh, I can look into like fluids and look into like a fluid tank capacity and buckets, uh, fluid tank max heights, hose pulleys. Uh, there's a couple other things that I want to touch upon really quickly. One cool thing to talk about though is, uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, if you are just at the menu and you scroll wheel, you can actually spin the cog wheel in the back, which is a pretty neat little touch. Whoever's create dev looked at this and thought that that would be a cool idea, thank you. The little things are the things that make me love this mod. There we go. This was something that I wanted to talk about uh, because I've referenced this in my fluids, is the hose pulley, or hose pulley block threshold. This is the amount of uh, source blocks that you need before a source is considered infinite. And at the moment, it's set to 10,000 by default. So you can change this to make it like literally only 10 blocks if you would like, 
and now the threshold is only 10 blocks. So once it's 10 blocks, it's gonna be considered infinite, so you can make an infinite lava source and power things like crazy. Uh, this is all gonna be very interesting to do in my Rocket World video to see if I'm gonna change any of these guys, uh, just because of, uh, I guess, if I wanna keep it as base of create mod if I would like, or if I wanna modify some things. Now we're going to touch upon something that I think might be a little controversial, <laughs> uh, at least from the people I've seen inside of my Discord, is that the block zapper has been removed. And this is something I even made an entire video on, or a section of a video on how to make a block zapper. And that's uh, that's no longer a thing, uh, which is interesting. But uh, if we go ahead and click on the new version of all of this, this is the Creative World Shaper, which we had something that was close to this in the past. Uh, but they've added in some functionality that was just a part of the block zapper. There's also some additional functionality. I'm not going to cover too much of it, but you can see uh, the gist is that you can almost use like world edit style inside of the create mod with a like type of world gun that you can use. Uh, you can get really complicated. If you really want me to make a video on this, I can, but I usually don't cover this because I know 90% of the people that are watching me are playing survival mode or in some type of mod pack. So I... Uh, covering something that's creative mode doesn't really give much value but i just want to notice that the block zapper has been removed the functionality has moved to the world shaper you can't get this in survival mode uh this is going to be super useful for like builders that want to build in creative mode speaking of removals we've also removed the deforester which i'm not too upset about because there was not too much of a use for it uh and that's solely because of the system something that we used in the mechanic crafters a lot is that if you take a mechanical saw place it against the oak log take a hand crank and then just right click, it will actually go ahead and take out the entire tree, just like so. Uh, which was the entire point of the Deforester, except the Deforester was super expensive and had durability and it was something you didn't use till the future. Well, that's been completely removed and you could just use this system uh, now, which we've had in the past. I slightly covered this in the past, but uh, something I wanted to cover here is that the integrated circuits have been removed. This is something that was used in the rotational speed controller crafting recipe. So this was something you needed mechanical crafting for, and then you also needed lapis sheets, which have also been removed, which uh, I guess that was basically their only use. Kind of a little confused on why they removed them. I thought it'd be something kind of cool to uh, decorate with maybe a little bit. I don't know. I'm not the biggest builder, uh, but lapis sheets have been removed and thus integrated circuits have been removed. And I think they did that so speed controllers can be used a lot earlier in the game. You don't have to worry about mechanical crafting right in the beginning. You can make a lot of these things with very minimal items, and this will allow you to mess with speed controllers early in the game, which is something I'm really proud of and really happy for, because I know a lot of people struggle with the whole speed stress concept, and again, probably a reason I'll have to remake 90% of my tutorials. <laughs> Another quick little thing to add in is that Nixie tubes can also be dyed now, which is pretty neat. You can see I have the word subscribe with an exclamation mark in the nice YouTube red color, uh, which you can simply just right click with a piece of dye. It'll actually dye the Nixie tubes. And if you don't know how I'm writing custom text inside of a Nixie tube, you just take a name tag, place it in an anvil, type whatever you would like to it, and then right click the name tag onto a group of Nixie tubes and it will write the word for you. Uh, and you could write the entire word like subscribe exclamation mark and right click on one Nixie tube and it will change the entire set. This is something else that I didn't know if I was gonna show off in a video like this, but spilled milk can now remove effects of entities. And I think this might be something that will be kind of neat to uh, maybe have in like an adventure map or something like that in the future. Uh, but the gist of it is, is if I take our uh, splash potion of poison and I poison our cow right there, I can now go ahead and turn on our milk. Our milk is gonna be pulled through our system, slowly but surely, placed onto our cow just like this, and actually remove the effect that he had. So you can see it didn't even kill him. Uh, granted, poison wouldn't really kill him, but uh, you could see we still have the poison on us, but no poison on him. So that's a, it's a pretty neat little thing, maybe something we'd use in an adventure map or something like that. Another thing to talk about is that saws now yield more planks, but in result of that, saws can no longer process stacks. And this is something that, again, I didn't find out until pretty late into the game. If you take a group of logs, so we'll just take a stack of logs, uh, you can actually throw a log onto the saw. It will go ahead and process into a stripped log. Then you can put a stripped log back onto the saw, process it again, and it turns into planks. And you can see, well, it's turned into some number of planks here. Uh, but the old pattern was that you could take an entire stack and process the entire stack at once. You can no longer do that. It only processes a section, but you can see you can just hold this down and it will continue to go. Maybe I'll build some kind of automated wood chopping area or something in the future. Just a nice, simple design uh, to kind of alleviate this entire process. 
This was another thing that I was debating on if it was worth it to put it inside of this video, but mechanical arms take less power, doesn't take much power anymore now to actually use them. Again, this was something I avoided a lot in a lot of my designs. I didn't use mechanical arms because it just cost too much power. It was kind of pointless to even use them. Uh, so now we can use them a lot more in our designs. So cool little recipe changes I figured we'd talk about is the chocolate melting feature now. So if you actually take chocolate uh, and put it inside of a basin that has a mixer above it, uh, so you can see we've thrown bars of chocolate in here, it will actually mix it and turn it right into, as I'm getting a ton of achievements, right into liquid chocolate. So we're kind of reversing the recipe. And you can also do that with honey liquidification. Uh, I think I butchered that word a little bit. But uh, if we light the blaze burner, we can throw in honey blocks. And this will do the same thing. This will actually go ahead and liquefy it and turn it into liquid honey. And then we can also now honey compact as well by taking honeycomb. We can throw it into our basin and a basin will actually press this right into honeycomb blocks. Now, this was one of the things that I hinted at in the beginning of this video is that extendo grips now have a durability. This was one of the like the biggest things to craft because you could just have unlimited reach and it was great for fighting other mobs and players. Well, now there's durability to this, but there is a way to actually make it so it's unlimited, and that is with a copper back tank. So if you equip the copper back tank uh, onto your back, you now use the extendo grips durability, or excuse me, use the copper back tanks durability instead of the extendo grips, which could be a little balance to it. Uh, one thing is though, is that you're no longer gonna have a chest plate, so you're gonna have less armor than if you had like a netherite chest plate on or something like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but I figure this is definitely something I should cover inside of this video because I know a lot of people are gonna be uh, maybe a little upset or a little confused about the extendo grip being able to be broken now. Another little quick little design thing is that soul fire blaze burners are now a thing. So if you take a blaze burner and you take soul soil and flint and steel, so you right click, turns to a fire, and then you right click with soul soil, it now turns into our soul uh, fire blaze burner, which is a nice little upgrade, a little cool decoration, uh, especially perfect if you want to make some kind of types of lights inside of your building. And this leads me to another video that I made in one of my tips videos is that spawners can no longer be picked up. Uh, you can actually use a minecart to attach it to a spawner and then you used to be able to take a wrench and then just simply right or shift right click and pick up the entire spawner contraption with the spawner inside and then move it to wherever you would like. That could no longer happen. You can change that in the create config commands. If you type create config and went into this config, you can actually change this in your settings, but this is going to be based off of the server that you use or anything along those lines. Uh, but something to keep in mind though is that you can attach it to a minecart and then move it around via rails and things like that. Uh, so there is still a way to move them around, it's just not going to be as easy as before. And going along with the whole minecart contraptions, they can no longer pick up obsidian and you can see that by me attaching this minecart, trying to attach it to this block of obsidian, you can see it's no longer attaching to obsidian. Uh, I don't think this will cause too many issues because I don't think many people have used obsidian onto their contraptions, but makes sense. Obsidian's super difficult to break. If you could just attach it to a minecart, it'd kind of cause some problems. And that leads us to the very last quick little update is that create pallet block drops now drop their variant. They don't drop the exact block. So if I mined this andesite pillar, it would drop a block of andesite. It wouldn't drop andesite pillar. Uh, but of course you could use like a stone cutter or something like that to actually change those blocks if you wanted to do something along those lines. Uh, but I figured I'd point that out, even though I don't think I've seen many people use create pallet blocks. Um, you can see if I can pull them up, um, all of these different blocks will now drop their variant instead of dropping themselves. Uh, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a ton of work to get this video up and running all in one day. I'm literally recording, editing, and uploading this video in just a couple hours. So uh, yeah, this has been a day. Uh, I'm gonna get a coffee after this. All I ask is if you enjoyed it, drop a like, feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna be making tons of different machines in the future of all using these different conjunctions of blocks and designs and maybe even remaking my entire tutorial series if you guys want that. So let me know in the comments. Feel free to subscribe for more content like that and definitely feel free to drop a like. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys all in the next one.